The Farrell Bent Wire System, or BWS, was developed in response to the need for a combined myofunctional treatment and arch development. The BWS was also designed for use in conjunction with MRC's popular trainer system, the T4K for mixed dentition, the T4B and T4C2 for use with braces, and the T4A for permanent dentition. The BWS is composed of commonly used and readily available components. This section acts as a guide for selecting materials and instruments. The BWS tube is unique and must be obtained from MRC. All other items can be obtained from a local supplier. Cut off 10 cm of 0.7 mm stainless steel wire. Mark the center line of the wire. First, bend the anterior section to the ideal arch shape between the distal edges of the upper. The arch form should be close to ideal. Very narrow arches require narrowing of the BWS arch form. Mark a point at the distal of the canine. Form an S bend around the premolars or deciduous first molars using hollow jaw pliers. Reverse the pliers to finalize the S bend. The BWS should fit with minor activation between the anterior arch. Mark a point between the second premolar or second deciduous molar and the first permanent molar. Using loop bending pliers, form a loop 5 to 7 mm wide. Ensure the bend is at the correct angle to clear palatal soft tissue. The resulting loop should look like this. Angle the loop to clear soft tissue. 25 degrees upper, 10 degrees for the lower. Note that all bends should be single plane. Mark a point 2 to 3 mm from the top of the distal part of the loop. And using triple jaw pliers, make an almost 90 degree bend forward. Be careful not to overstress the wire, as this will cause breakage at a later time. Using bird beak pliers, create a tight 180 degree reverse bend back to the distal. This makes a loop suitable for attaching a ligature. The distal end that engages the tube in the molar band should be stepped up 1 to 2 mm from the mesial part of the loop. Cut off the ends exactly to the length of the molar tube, which is 6 mm. The completed activation loop should look like this. The lower BWS has the same requirements. Don't forget to round off the ends. Repeat these steps to make a second loop on the contralateral side. Ensure all bends are in the correct single plane. Now you should have a completed BWS ready for insertion.
the BWS should approximately fit the model. Since there is variation in the positioning of molar tubes, complete accuracy at this stage is not required. The BWS should conform to the basic arch form. A key advantage of the BWS is that it can derotate and align laterals. Always use a marking pen to position wire bends exactly. Bends positioned around instanding teeth must be highly accurate to ensure effective dental alignment. Use hollow jaw pliers to ensure accurate bends. This is how the first stage should look. This is the completed BWS modified for instanding rotated laterals. Modifying the Farrell Bent Wire System or BWS to restore lost C space. Use fine triple jawed pliers to get tight and accurate bends. If the positioning becomes incorrect, it is better to start over. Keep lost C space modification loops as tight as possible. Check on the model that the C space bend is positioned against the lateral. Now you have a bend to restore lost C space. After one week's preparation with separating elastics, select the appropriate size molar band. Ensure the molar band is a very firm fit and not too big because there is considerably more torque exerted on the molar band than for regular arch wire. Weld a farrel spec tube to the centre of the lingual section of the selected band. Alternately, you may use pre-welded bands with the correct BWS tubes. Cement the band in place with glass ionomer cement. Next, place the BWS into the tubes and check for correct fit and activation. Correct the angles of the distal ends so there is no active torque on the molars. There should be no active lateral expansion in the appliance. Intermolar width of the BWS should be the same as at the molar tubes. This is because of the sufficient lateral expansive force exerted once the loops are activated. Check that the loops are clear of the soft tissue. Remove the BWS. Place two big premolar brackets in bracket holders with the wire slot positioned towards the gingival direction. Etch the lingual surface of the premolars and bond the big brackets with arch wire slot towards the gingival direction. Alternately, a composite ledge can be made on the premolars. This is preferred if the deciduous first molar is present. For extra retention or more force on an instanding anterior tooth, use an anterior big bracket a button or composite on that tooth. The BWS is held in place using a ligature from the distal of the tube to the ligature loop of the wire. Placing ligatures is a skillful job. In the mouth it is not easy. This is put in place using mosquito forceps. The larger 1.3mm ligatures are best. Effectively, the result is that you guarantee the BWS stays in. 
and you increase the depression of the upper anteriors. Activation at the loops should be no more than one millimeter initially, then subsequently one to two millimeters every three to four weeks. Check for any irritation, and in particular, anywhere the BWS encroaches on the soft tissue. The trainer system, combined with the ferrule bent wire system, can effectively replace existing phase 1 treatment. This dual treatment approach gives substantial arch development with very light forces provided by a simple and inexpensive fixed appliance. The ferrule bent wire system can be combined with fixed brackets in seamless integration with the T4B or trainer for braces, or T4C2, which combines arch development and class 2 correction in conjunction with partial or full fixed brackets while continuing the all-important myofunctional training. If further alignment of the anterior teeth is needed, you can achieve this by continuing with the Phase 2 Harder Trainer, or the Myobrace system. The molar bands and beg brackets will need to be removed to implement the Myobrace. Always ensure that the trainer is worn daily in conjunction with the BWS program. The trainer must be used one hour a day plus overnight while sleeping. If the patient does not use the trainer for a minimum of one hour daily plus overnight, decrease or stop adjustment at each visit or remove the BWS for a period of time. Because it has no visual or speech problems, patient acceptance of this appliance is generally good. You will notice, for the first few weeks of treatment, there isn't a lot of movement. After this initial period, tooth movement tends to progress more rapidly. Avoid the temptation to increase the adjustment amount by more than 1 to 2 mm per side. Class 2 correction. These cases often require extractions, but this is now no longer necessary. Although it is better to start early, space loss can be gained with the BWS even at this late stage. Here, the patient is issued with a T4C2. You must have a trainer in place, otherwise the treatment will not work. The BWS introduces light forces and the trainer system provides myofunctional correction. The BWS is introduced for lower arch development after three months. You only need 1.7 grams to move an anterior tooth. The lower lip exerts 100 to 300 grams and the tongue is capable of exerting up to 500 grams. Now you see finished arch development with the use of the BWS. The upper BWS is removed and the myobrace is introduced. Continue arch development. Stability can be checked. Continued arch development with the lower BWS. Look at the development rather than the alignment at this stage. Arch development provides space for aligning teeth. A difficult case made simple.